It's a question that irks many neurobiologists. What if we could use 100% of our brains? The idea that we only use about 10% of our brains is a popular theory with no true identifiable origin. It has widely been used as the premise in movies, such as Lucy, about Scarlett Johansson accessing her full brain capacity and developing superpowers, as well as Limitless, about Bradley Cooper taking a drug that also helps him use his full brain capacity and gain superpowers. So, what makes this idea so believable? And is there any truth to it? What would real life super mental powers be like? A lot of us might like to imagine that we only use a small fraction of our potential in order to explain our flaws and imperfections. We like to think that we are capable of being more than we are, but that some obstacle prevents us from reaching the state of our highest being. After all, having an obstacle to something gives us the perfect excuse not to get there. Think about when you don't feel guilty about not going for a run because it's raining outside, or you can't do your errands because there's a reported traffic jam. When there's a a justifiable reason to not do something that you don't want to do, you feel content and cozy about not doing it, right? Thus, some people might like the 10% brain idea because it gives them an excuse to be imperfect. It may also provide us with a satisfying explanation for humanity's shortcomings and the odd eccentricities of behavior from other people. Thus, we think, well, we are a higher species, we just can't access our full potential because we only use 10% of our brains. And having an explanation that simultaneously complements what we are while giving us an excuse not to be that way makes us feel satisfied. Well, we hate to burst your bubble, but the idea that we only use 10% of our brain capacity has largely been debunked as a myth. Modern brain scans show us that there's activity throughout the entire brain, even at moments when we're resting. This means that you already utilize the full organ. Now, we know that this piece of information must be incredibly disappointing for you if you were an avid believer of the idea, and you wouldn't be alone. A survey of school teachers taken in Britain and the Netherlands found that as many as 48% and 46% respectively endorsed this myth. In the US, 65% of people were found to believe it. We're sorry to have to inform you that you don't possess the capacity to display any Lucy-like superhuman abilities that we know of. Some people continuously use this claim to explain their psychic abilities. Don't fall for it though, because more often than not, it's probably a hoax or a scheme to obtain your money for sham psychic services. Still, Hollywood endorses this myth as truth with their premises and story ideas for films, feeding it into the minds of viewers. But biologists make the argument that we would not have evolved such large brains if we only tapped into such a tiny portion of them. Think of it this way. If the 10% brain myth were based on fact, then that would imply that most of the brain is unnecessary or unimportant. In actuality, the brain as an organ is pretty amazing and is actually quite resourceful. There are no unused parts. Additionally, if we only use 10% of our brains, then major brain damage wouldn't be as devastating as it is with so much spare capacity. According to Dr. Scott Lillenfield, quoted by LiveScience.com, even simple tasks generally require contributions of processing areas spread throughout virtually the whole brain. Though there aren't any drugs that help you use 100% of your brain, like Limitless, because, well, you already do that, there does exist chemicals and drugs that can boost the brain's ability to remember, process information, or be alert, like with coffee, for example. A moderate amount of coffee makes us feel energized and ready to take on the day. It helps us complete homework assignments, stay on task, and study for that dreaded final exam, or write that term paper. Need to get through that boring three-hour meeting? Coffee can help with that, too. For most of us, it's a lot harder to focus on these types of daunting mental tasks without the energy boost from coffee. So would drinking more coffee lead to using greater mental capacity? Could this useful beverage turn you into a productive superhero of sorts? Well, not really. Too much of anything is never a good thing. This includes heightened alertness. The caffeine in coffee stimulates adrenal glands that release adrenaline throughout your body. This, in turn, can make you feel on edge. This is especially bad if you already have anxiety, because it can make this feeling even worse. Adrenaline from caffeine increases your heart rate and heightens the fight-or-flight response. So you may react with panic at something small, such as your cat sneaking up on you while you're working at your desktop computer at home. Adderall is another brain-altering substance that tends to be used to assist people with ADHD who have trouble concentrating. It stimulates the nervous system, which increases one's ability to focus and control behavior. It does this by increasing activity of the brain chemicals dopamine and norepinephrine. Like caffeine, however, this drug triggers the body's fight-or-flight response. Thus, too much Adderall can lead to some very unpleasant side effects, including nervousness, restlessness, difficulty falling asleep, shortness of breath, tremors, changes in sex drive, shakiness, or loss of appetite, just to name a few. 
With substances such as coffee or Adderall, we suppose it is possible to have a mental superpower of sorts, but only if your power is super anxiety. We imagine that a heroic figure named Anxiety Man running around fighting crime with his heightened sense of focus at the speed of panic would be pretty amusing to say the least. Though it's fun to think about, a hero like this would probably not be a good role model for kids, because he would teach the value of dependence on substances. Remember kids, to drink a cup of coffee or two or three per day. Also, don't forget your daily dose or dosages of Adderall to go with it if you want to be super hyped up like me. Yeah, we don't think that would go over too well with the parents. Now you may be thinking that since you already use 100% of your brain, there's not much else you can do aside from taking drugs to boost its functioning, which we wouldn't recommend without consulting a doctor. But there are always ways to improve yourself and your mental abilities. So how can you unlock your full potential? Well, for one, you can read more. This might not be what you were hoping to hear. Heck, you might now be thinking that this episode of the Infographic Show has taken a very boring turn. Yet aside from expanding your mind with knowledge, reading also has been shown to improve cognitive functioning. It forces your brain to work, which makes your thinking sharper. So maybe you should actually read the chapters of that book that were assigned to you in your English class? We know you probably don't get Shakespeare. A lot of us modern day dwellers don't, but we would commend you for trying anyway. Maybe you'll come up with an interesting infographic show topic in the process and send your idea to us. Like, what's the deal with the Montagues and Capulets, and why can't they just get a grip? We'll leave it up to you. Reading isn't the only way to improve brain functioning. Arguably even more boring is solving arithmetic problems. Okay, seriously? You're probably slamming your head against the wall right now with how dull this episode has gotten. If you're shaking your head thinking, yeah right, we don't blame you. A lot of people would choose not to do any of these things if they can help it, but solving arithmetic problems has a lot of benefits, which include stopping your brain from deteriorating too much as you grow older. Our suggestions won't grant you cool mental superpowers like Lucy, but they will help you have the upper hand when tasked with challenges that force you to stretch your brain's cognitive muscles. If your teacher calls on you in class to answer a question, you'll look like the smartest guy there as you immediately come up with the answer. Other kids will either think this is cool or just pick on you for being a nerd. This leads to our other superpower, aside from super anxiety, which is super nerddom. If you combine super anxiety with super nerdum, then you'll have a person who is always on time, always completing tasks and assignments, always doing all the readings, always possessing the answer to every question, and never getting the girl. This individual would also be high on neuroticism. Some people also believe that you can access your full potential by simply being your best self and helping others. This is another way of improving yourself, by being moral and ethical. Now we've stooped to a new low. If you're still watching this, you might be thinking, okay, come on, you talked about medicine, then reading, then math, and now you're saying we should go volunteer. I watched this show to get away from all that stuff. But there is an abundance of research on the effects of altruism on the brain, which shows the activation of dopamine upon helping others. In essence, helping others makes you feel good. Now, this doesn't mean that we expect you to drop everything and go volunteer at a homeless shelter or risk your life resuscitating a bunch of orphaned, injured puppies from a bus accident while treating their cancer with hugs like the guy she told you not to worry about. Instead, you can do small things like hold open the door for other people or stop and pay someone a compliment. In this way, you can make someone's day which makes you feel like your best self. This leads to our third real-life superpower, super helpfulness. The super helpful guy makes friends everywhere he goes. People always remember him for being a good Samaritan, positive role model, and friend to the community. A hero with super anxiety, nerdum, and helpfulness combined together shines like a beacon of light. He stands tall and proud with his cape flapping in the wind behind him. When the wind picks up, he jolts out of his skin from the heightened sound while proceeding to tremble in an isolated corner in a fetal position to get over the scare. Then he panics about being late for his new job while offering to work more overtime hours to make up for it. We admit that real-life superpowers aren't as intriguing as action-packed fictional superpowers in movies, so we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode so you can watch an exciting Marvel or DC movie. Chances are, though, we've taken away the believability of these films by shedding an all-too-realistic light on the nature of what it really means to be super powerful. Now that the secret is out and you know you are already using 100% of your brain capacity, you're probably going to sulk in your chair for a while pondering the meaning of your boring existence in this flat, non-exciting world. For this, we recommend that you try watching our other video, Why Do You Even Exist? Maybe you'll derive some insight from it. How would you improve the extent of your mental potential? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Weirdest Brain Disorders. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.